Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that we currently have two applications out for the King's Indian on iPhone and on Android. Check them out. Welcome back to ChessOpenings.com. In today's video, we'll take a look at an interesting question which came up in the Baltic defense after the moves pawn to d4, pawn to d5, pawn to c4, bishop to f5, the Baltic defense, and the subject of a couple videos which we've produced so far. Now, pawn takes pawn on d5, which has in mind that if black recaptures with the move queen takes d5, there would now follow knight to c3, and then quite possibly the move pawn to e4 on the next move, gathering some central pawns. And so black inserts the move bishop takes b1, and now white plays the move queen to a4 check, a very important insertion, which causes black to play the move pawn to c6, and again, we reviewed this in an earlier video. And now after rook takes b1, queen takes d5, and knight to f3, white benefits from the insertions of the move queen to a4 check and pawn to c6 in a couple of different ways. By inserting the move queen to a4 check and calling out this move pawn to c6, white first of all eliminates the possibility of black's queen's knight developing to its most natural and aggressive square on c6. At the same time, the queen on a4 already provides defense for the pawn on a2. Now, one of the viewers of the videos asked the question, what happens if black plays the move pawn to b5 in this position? My assumption is that the player was asking, what should we do with our queen in this position? Since if we move the queen to a5, this isn't such a bad move, but throughout the variations we saw again and again that white actually attends, intends to move this queen back to the c2 square where she can support the advance e2 to e4 under the right conditions. Therefore, after this move pawn to b5, white may wish to avoid playing queen to a5 since the queen is now completely out of touch with the critical e4 square. But on the other hand, if white plays the move queen to c2, which would appear to be most natural, black has the option of playing the move queen takes a2. Now, having analyzed this position carefully, it appears that white's best option after the move pawn to b5 is in fact to go for a pawn sacrifice with the move queen to c2, simply allowing black to go for queen takes a2. And it seems to me like this is a very useful position to take a look at, since from here, white actually has a great deal of compensation for the pawn in a few different ways. In the first place, black's pawn on c6 is definitely weakened in this position because of black's advance pawn b7 to b5. In this position, only the knight on b8 protects the pawn on c6, and so the development of black's queenside pieces is somewhat complicated. On the other hand, there are possibilities that after white is able to castle his king on the king side and connect the rooks, then there will also be possibilities that white can start gaining time by attacking the queen with moves like rook to a1. Also, white is now able to play the move pawn to e4, gaining some territory in the center and preparing himself to be able to kick any knight which comes out to the f6 square away with the move pawn to e5, or white is also threatening to play the move pawn to d5 at an opportune moment here, perhaps even straight away if given the opportunity to do so. So now some analysis continued from this position. Pawn to e4, let's say that black plays the move pawn to e6, and now there are some different ways for white to continue, such as bishop to d3, but I think this is a little bit weaker than the option which I'm going to share in just a moment, because now black is able to bring his bishop out with check, bishop b4 check, 
bishop d2, queen to a5, and while white still has adequate compensation for the pawn and probably a slight advantage here, he's struggling a little bit to prove that he has adequate threats for the pawn. So if we back up here, instead of the move bishop to d3, the very best move in this position is to play bishop to d2. And this has a couple of very important ideas in mind. First of all, the move bishop to d2 eliminates the possibility of bishop to b4 check. Also, the move bishop to d2 sets up a hidden tactical threat. Take just a few seconds here and see if it was white to move, what could white do in this position? White could actually play the move bishop takes b5, a move worthy of an exclamation point. Since now, if black recaptures the bishop with pawn takes bishop on b5, there would follow queen to c8 check, king to e7, and now queen to b7 check would almost work in this position, except for the fact that after knight to d7, queen takes a8, white's very own rook on b1 would also be hanging, and so this does not work. But instead of playing queen to b7 check, White can first insert the move rook to c1, which not only gets the rook out of dodge, but at the same time prepares to bring the rook into the c7 square. And White maintains the threat of regaining his material with interest with the move queen to b7 check. And now, for example, if Black were to try the move queen to a6, which protects against the move queen to b7 check, he would find that he's headed straight for mate after bishop to g5 check, pawn to f6, rook to c7 check, king to d6, queen to d8 check, and it will be mate on the very next move. Therefore, after this move, rook to c1, black is decisively losing in this position. Therefore, after the move, bishop to d2, it turns out that there's already a hidden threat in the position to play the move bishop takes b5. And perhaps, let's say, if black were to play the move knight to f6, this would be quite careless, as again, bishop takes b5 can be played. And now in this case, if black were to capture the bishop, queen to c8 check, would followed by bishop to b4 would be mate, since the king cannot even escape to the f6 square here. And, by the way, after bishop takes b5, black is already pretty much crushed here, as the pawn on c6 is now attacked twice, defended once, and there are no adequate ways to bring in a new defender, the move king d7 being easily addressed with knight to e5 check. So this would again be decisive. The most logical and adequate reply for black in this position would simply be to play the move bishop to e7, continuing development in such a way as to also help eliminate the threat of bishop takes b5, since now black can recapture c takes b5, queen c8 check, bishop to d8, and now in this position, bishop to a5 is no good because the queen handles that square, and again, white needs to spend some time protecting his own rook, and so black is more than okay in this position. Thus instead, white plays the move bishop to d3 here, now knight to f6, castles kingside, and now a point is revealed which we discussed at the beginning of the video, that white is now threatening to trap the queen with the move rook to a1. Therefore, black continues queen to a6, and again this is all simply analysis at the moment. Rook b to c1, applying additional pressure to the c6 pawn and continuing to tie down the black queen side pieces, since now any attempt to develop the knight will lead to queen takes c6. And also here, if black were to try to castle king side, he has to contend with the move pawn to e3, e5, followed by bishop takes h7 check, gathering up the pawn and quite an attack in exchange for this position here. And so, black most likely needs to throw in the move pawn 
to h6. And so notice that so far, all black has done in the opening is he's managed to capture pawn on a2, but he's suffered quite a lot in exchange for this pawn. White has been able to keep pressure on c6. Surprisingly, he's also been able to create tactics which threaten to win material or even checkmate the king outright. And finally, black has had to lose some time in removing his queen from a position where it may be easily trapped. And in the meantime, white has connected his rooks, got all of his pieces off the back rank, and also brought his rook into an important square. And now he can continue to gain some impressive tactical possibilities by simply continuing pawn to d5, a move worthy of an exclamation point here. And now, in the event of c takes d5, white immediately wins material with queen to c8 check. Now queen takes c8, rook takes c8, and of course, if black were to try moving the king away to d7, the rook on h8 would be lost, basically for free. And if black continues with bishop to d8, bishop takes b5 check. Now king to e7 leads to bishop b4 mate. And knight fd7 loses material. After knight to e5, white threatens to capture the knight. And because of the pin against the knight on b8, which is making use of the fact that the rook on a8 is unprotected, black will certainly lose material. And therefore, after the move queen to c8 check, both the move queen takes c8 loses, and also if black were to try the immediate bishop to d8, white would simply win material with queen takes a6, knight takes a6, bishop takes b5 check, followed by bishop takes a6. Therefore, it's not possible for black to capture the pawn on d5 with the c pawn after this move pawn to d5. And also, black cannot simply bypass the pawn with pawn to c5 because the move pawn to d6 would be extraordinarily strong here. Now, either of the options of capturing on d6 could be met with the move pawn to e5 with a fork here. And of course, if black were to simply retreat, then quite possibly the move queen takes e5 followed by bishop takes b5, potential pawn to e5. And so the move pawn to d5 can only be met with e takes d5, pawn to e5, and there's simply no way for black to avoid some kind of decisive attack against the king in this position, as white simply has a huge superiority in his piece coordination. For example, the move knight f to d7 could be met right away with the move pawn to e6 followed by knight to d4, and this would be very, very strong. Or another, perhaps more calm approach would be to play the move bishop to f5, preparing to play pawn to e6. And now after knight to c5, bishop to b4, knight f to d7, bishop takes d7 check, knight takes d7. Now here, black, white has occasion to play some kind of attacking chance with pawn to e6, simply allowing bishop takes b4 check, e takes d7 check, king takes d7, and after queen to f5 check, white has an enormous attack as compensation for the three pawns which he sacrificed in this position. The king is simply out in the middle of the board, the queen, rook, knight, and this other rook can all participate in the attack, and there is already a concrete weakness on f7 and the possibility of the knight jumping into the attack here. And so, after pawn takes d5, pawn to e5, Black's best option is to try knight to e4, bishop takes e4, pawn takes e4, queen takes e4, and now castles kingside. But no matter how Black tries to wriggle his way out of this position, he is surely going to meet with disaster here. A simple way for white to continue being knight to d4, which again, by the way, applies additional pressure to the c6 pawn, but also prepare sacrifices such as bishop takes h6. For example, if black plays rook to e8, now the move bishop takes h6 
is absolutely feasible in this position. As after g takes h6, pawn to e6, white is simply ripping open the king's position, threatening to capture on f7 with e takes f7 check, and then perhaps bringing the rook into the attack. There are three pieces cooperating against the king, and there should be no difficulty in eventually landing some sort of decisive king attack. On the other hand, if black were to try the move rook to d8, in all likelihood, white can continue with knight to f5, followed by rook to c3, a timely bishop takes h6 attack here, or also pawn to e6, and black is simply in huge trouble in this position. So what is the conclusion of today's video? At the beginning, we began with the Baltic defense with d4, d5, c4, and bishop to f5, a line which we've looked at in a couple of different videos. The purpose was to look at a specific question which one of the players who was looking at the video posed. d4, d5, c4, bishop to f5, pawn takes pawn on d5, bishop takes b1, queen a4 check, c6, rook takes b1, queen takes d5, knight to f3, and the player asked, what happens if pawn to b5? The answer, after this long analysis, which was supported, is that after queen to c2, it's actually not feasible for black to capture the pawn on a2, as he simply falls far too behind in development. The analysis here has been very interesting because it's helped us to take a look at a position where black has willingly taken on some downside in his development in order to capture a pawn. And what we found is that the attack on the king turns out to be a constant theme throughout the variations, which allows white to increase his development advantage and that black never really gets out of this problem throughout the remainder of the analysis, which we took a look at. White simply continues e4, e6, and then this key move, bishop to d2, and combining pressure against c6, h7, possibly attacking the queen, and always threatening to rip open the king, white is able to create enough decisive threats to keep black off balance for the remainder of the analysis, and therefore, if white continues accurately from this position, I believe that white has a serious and very significant advantage. That's all for today. I hope that by looking at this video, you've increased your understanding of the Baltic opening, you've increased your understanding of how to take advantage of a development situation, and hopefully, you've increased your understanding of chess as a whole. We'll see you again. Before you go, if you have an opportunity, be sure to check out that we have three applications available on the Queen's Gambit Decline, available for iPhone and for Android. Check them out.